Hey folks, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I'm going to show you how to mix live grand piano. We're going to be looking at mixing live grand piano today, so we have an actual mic'd up grand piano recording that we're going to be mixing. But before we dive in, if you are ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process and its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at mixing grand piano. Let me start by playing you what the piano sounds like, the finished product here. So this is the finished piano mix in this song, and then I'll take off the processing here, and you can hear where we started. We've got two mics here. We've got a stereo mic and a mono mic, and I'll break down what those both are here in a second. Here's the finished piano mix for this song. You can hear it's not the biggest difference before and after the processing, just a little bit of enhancement, a little bit of air up on the top end. We're make, taking it from a duller sound to a more alive sound. It has some more depth to it from the reverb. But let's talk about the two mics here to start off. So we've got a stereo pair and a mono mic. The way I like to work when I'm recording piano is I like to do a matched pair over the piano, over the board, uh, usually a pair of condensers. I believe this is a pair of U67s is what I used. And then there's a mono mic, a single mic by itself, I like to put in one of the holes. Sometimes I reach for a dynamic mic, something like a, a 57, uh, but in this case I reached for a Lewitt microphone. I believe it was a 550, a Sub-Zero, 540, that's what it's called, it's the Sub-Zero microphone, so it's uh, supposed to be ultra quiet. And we play what each of these sound like here without the processing in. So here's the stereo pair of uh, 67s over the board. Obviously great sounding pair of microphones there, great picture of the piano. Now we have this guy here, which is just a mono mic, like I said, stuck inside one of the sound holes. So it's down a little bit further and we get a lot of tone coming from the actual soundboard on the piano and being inside one of those sound holes like that. So take a listen to what this mic sounds like. It's a fun mic to have just because of the tone you can get by bringing it up. It gives you a little bit more mid-range. And for a song like this where it's just piano vocal, I need that mid-range emphasis to make it feel full. And by having it down in the sound hole like that, it gives you a little bit more of this kind of metallic attack sort of sound, which helps the piano jump out when he hits it harder, which is nice. It's also a nice bonus to have this kind of mic if you wanna crush it with compression or distress or 1176 or something like that and make it really attack focused. But we're not doing that here, we're keeping it pretty natural here. Let's jump over our first plugin we're using here on the piano. So we're bussing both of these, these instruments together. So we got the stereo mics and the mono mic to a piano bus here, a keys bus. And this is the first thing we're doing here. We got an EQ on the bus a couple moves here, okay? First thing we're doing here is we're rolling off some of the low end. Now, because this is just a piano vocal song, I'm leaving this high pass filter pretty far back here. If it was a bigger song and there were a lot of guitars and bass and drums, I would probably roll it up a little bit further and clean up and tighten up some of that low end area. But I wanna hear that big low end on this song, especially when he starts hitting the piano a little bit harder. So we're keeping that down about 60 hertz there. A little dip here 
in the mid range or in the low mid area. We're at about, where are we at? 346 hertz. I don't want to pull too much out here because I don't want to destroy the body of the instrument here. So take a listen to these two moves. I'll A-B the high pass filter and I'll boost up this low mid frequency so you can hear uh, what we're taking care of there. Just a little balancing there in the low mid area, just so it tucks this kind of build up here down just a touch. I think I had a little bit of ringing here. This is what this notch is taking care of at 1.75K. So listen to this here. It might, it might be subtle. It might, it might rip your head off when I pull it up. So uh, be wary. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. Just uh, some frequency that was jumping out. It could have been something in the room or uh, something coming off the piano there. Just something that was jumping out, poking out a little bit, notched it out. So our cue is all the way up at 24. We're at 1.75K there, pulling out about 8 dB there. Just to tuck that back into the mix there. Last thing we're doing here with this EQ is we're boosting about 4.5 dB at 8K. So this is going to give us some of that nice, bright, air on the piano. So take a listen here to this boost and I'll take it out. You can hear what we lose. You can hear when I take that boost out, we lose that nice air up on the top end, but you don't wanna to go too far. You could hear when I boost it all the way up, it gets really bright and it gets pretty tinny and metallic sounding. So you gotta be careful there. That's something that we'll get from an artifact from the mono mic there and having mics over an actual piano board. Things can get a little bit strange sounding if you exaggerate any of the boosts here. Although the uh, U67s take boosts very, very well. Moving on down the line here, We've got one more EQ in place here before our compressor. Cutting a little bit here in the mid-range at 1.6K. I'll show you what that frequency sounds like and then a little bit more air up on the top end with a shelf. This is a little bit farther up on the top end though. So this is where we were sitting before around 7, 8K. So we're a little bit above that now with this Neve style EQ. Let me play you with and without this EQ. So we'll kick in here, the fat channel. We'll turn off the compressor for the moment and we'll AB just this EQ here. So we're pulling up a little bit more of that brightness up on the super, super highs there. So not, not where we were sitting before, we're pulling up a little bit above this now. So kind of this, this frequency range where our slope is uh, running off there. That's where we're pulling up there, just about 2.24 dB there. Again, we don't wanna go too far, otherwise things get overly bright sounding and you can get kind of that, that tinny sound there. We're pulling out some of that in the mid range here. That's that 1.6 area. We're just balancing the frequency range a little bit here. So that's our EQ before we move into the compressor. Now on live grand piano, especially if it's by itself like this, I wanna keep it as natural sounding as possible. That's why we're doing little moves here in conjunction uh, piece by piece here. I usually like to reach for an 1176 style compressor on piano, especially like something like this where he hits hard and then he hits soft and then he hits hard. I like to duck those peaks back a little bit, but I wanted to keep it as natural and as vibey as possible. So I'm reaching for this, this Fairchild emulation, the 670 here. So take a listen to what this is doing. I'll start without it and then I'll kick it in. We're only doing a little bit of compression here, maybe 3 dB of compression on these bigger peaks here, but listen to the vibe and the character it imparts on our piano.
Hear how it holds those high-end boosts in place and it kind of removes any of that tinny aspect that you get if you push too hard uh, on your EQ because it's now pushing into this Fairchild, which seems to me always to take high boosts really, really well. We're only doing maybe one or two dB of compression on those bigger peaks on the piano. So keeping it very gentle and very natural. Just love the vibe of this compressor. That's why I'm putting it on here. It stays very natural sounding to me and you don't hear the compression unless you're pushing really, really hard into it. Moving on after this compressor now, had a couple notches in the low end here. So I wanted to boost up some low end, but I had a couple frequencies that were ringing before I could boost it up. So I wanted to get rid of these before I boost up the low end and then get too crazy here. So listen to both of these here. I'll turn on and off this EQ and I'll boost both of them up so you can hear uh, the frequencies we're taking care of. So we'll start with, and then I'll take it out, see if you can hear the frequencies jump back in. So those two guys there on a couple of the lower notes that he hit, these frequencies just really, really spiked up. So I wanted to pull them back and tame them, sit them a little bit better with everything else there in our low end before we boost our low end overall. And that's what our last plugin here is doing. Reaching for this Poltec style EQ, the passive EQ here inside of Studio One. And we're just doing one notch up here at the 100 Hertz frequency on our low end here. That's all, this can get very, very aggressive very fast with this EQ. Small movements make a big difference. So we'll start without it here, and then I'll kick it in. Listen to how our low end blooms here. So we'll start without it. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this EQ, but once I put it in and just did that one little notch there at that 100 hertz, suddenly the piano felt big and it felt full and it was exactly where I wanted it in terms of the low end. Last thing we're doing here with our piano is we're adding a hall reverb. Now this is specific to this song, so if you wanted a drier sound, you don't have to do this, but we wanted a little bit of verb here on this song. So we're sending from the piano bus here to a hall reverb. This is just a recital hall reverb. And then we're running an EQ after it. So rolling everything off below 200 and everything off above 10K. So making sure we don't get into that tinniness or too much of that low end that we just got sitting right where we needed it. We don't wanna add any of it in the reverb and suddenly things are blowing up again. And then this thing here on the end, this is the dual pan plugin here inside of Studio One. All we're doing is we're swapping the left and right channels here on the reverb. That way it gives us the illusion of a little bit more width on the piano because the reverb is in the opposite channel as the piano is. So that stereo mic that we're getting there is gonna be flip-flopped inside the reverb, which gives us a little bit more width because there's some differentiation on the sides there with our reverb. Let me, let me play you what the reverb sounds like by itself. So nice, bright, mid-range sound there. Oops, clicking too many things there at the same time. Um, all I wanted to show you here was I'm using the Recital Hall uh, setting here inside of Studio One's uh, Room Reverb, and then I've just knocked out the pre-delay. I don't want any pre-delay, I want it to happen right with the piano. There's no reason to push it back at all. Just a nice brightness to the mid-range that we can pull up underneath our piano here. So take a listen with the actual piano now and I will pull in and out the reverb so you can hear what it adds. So we'll start with it and then I'll, I will take it out, listen to how our piano kind of dries up a little bit and then we kick the reverb back in and we get that nice depth that we want on the piano.
so the reverb's doing double duty here. It's helping to balance out our piano frequency-wise overall because it gives us some brightness in the mid-range so we're not just working with our low end and our top end. And it get, gets really scoop sounding. It gives us some balance overall frequency-wise. And then it gives us that nice depth and that nice length that we want to hear on a live grand piano being played live in a room like that. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Music